Uh, hi guys, in this video we are making an elevator. Actually, it's uh, from um, a question. Um, let me, uh, sorry, let me just get your, your name here. Uh, Jesus uh, Munoz Post. Uh, again, I'm sorry if I've, I've butchered your name horribly. Uh, but he was asking, uh, this is from the, the UI slider video where we, we move a, a, a cube, I think it's a cube, um, using a slider switch, uh, using a slider UI. And if, could we do that in a button? And of course, we can do that in a button. And we do that and so much more uh, after the fade. Okay, so this is the, the scene that we have, and this is the, the floor, and then this is our elevator here. And I'm gonna add a button. And what the, the button's gonna do is, it's gonna interact with the, the, this block here and move it to another height. Okay, so that's the, the plan. Um, so I'll go back to our scene here, and then go to button. And I'll make this 2D. And we'll give it some 2D controls. And put this button up here. And the button text will be move um, elevator. So we'll call it move elevator. And the text here will be move elevator 2. Um, and that's good enough. I mean, it's, you know, that this is what our game is going to look like. So when we click on the button, then it's going to move the elevator up and down. Uh, and I'll clamp that to the top there. Uh, if you want the, the full source for code for this, it's uh, down in the link below. And if you want to get this scene and sort of play along, then that's also in the, the, uh, the links down below as well. So that's our, uh, that's our button in place. And now what we need to do is we need to create another uh, script. So our script, we're gonna just create inside here. And I'm, oh no, I just created a new folder. Didn't wanna create a new folder. Uh, my new script. Oh, and also the, the scripts as well, they're linked below as well. Uh, and my new script here is just gonna be a simple elevator move. So simple elevator move, and I'm going to double click that, and I'm going to move that into place. Now, what, what we want to do is we want to move the elevator from a particular position to another position. So we're going to need to um, uh, control those, we need to put those, those values in there. So if we go back to the game here, our starting position uh, for our, uh, if I, sorry, if I go back to the game itself. Uh, our starting position is up here, so 006.5. And we're gonna raise it up to, you know, maybe five or something. It's a, it seems like a good level. Um, it should still be in, in view, oh no, it's not. Uh, let's make it four. And it should be in view. Okay, so that's that's good there. So we'll move it four up on the, the Y axis. Uh, all right, so a simple elevator move. So I'm going to reload that. So we need a start and we need a stop position for the elevator. Now what we can do is we can grab the start position um, when the object, uh, when we first get the object, and that, that's what we'll do. Uh, but I'll, I'll make it public. Or should I make it public? Let's not make it public. Let's do vector three. Uh, start position, uh, and then because it's the y axis, we actually only need the height of the the the, the position. So we can do public float, and then that's going to be um, uh, destination height. So that's going to be the height off the the ground there. So our uh, vector three is going to be the start position, and then our actual height is going to be calculated. Uh, it's going to do void, awake, and so our start position is our transform dot position. So that's easy enough done. Our end position is going to be the start position plus the height. And the way we can do that is we can cheat because we know that our, our x and our y uh, so our x and our z are not going to change, it's just the height that changes. So we can say that our end position is equal to the start position plus, and then we want to put in the destination height. Of course, we can't do that 
because it's a vector. So we can make this a vector. So we can say new vector three, and then we specify the x value, which is zero, the y value, which is the, the, the difference in height, and then the z value. So now we have our end position. And I'll make that quick there. Okay. So we have our, uh, that's our simple elevator move. Now what we want to do now is we want to be able to move that elevator when we click on the button, we want to move it from the, the first floor to the second floor and then back again. So the way we do that is we're going to create a public um, void method and that's going to, um, we're then going to hook that up to our uh, buttons click event. So we're going to do public void uh, move elevator. So we're going to have our public void move elevator here. And we're going to say, um, we're going to have a Boolean variable here that's going to say on ground floor. I'm going to default that to be true. And then we're going to test that. And then if it's on the ground floor, we're going to move it to the, 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 uh, the second floor. And if it's on the, the second floor, we're going to move it to the ground floor. All right. Right, so we're going to say on ground floor equals not on ground floor. So what we're what that means is that we're saying if this value is true, make it false. We're saying take the value that's in here, which could be true or false, and then invert it. So if it's true, it's false. If it's false, it's true. And then we need to test it. So we use our if statement. So we can say if on ground floor. So if it's on the ground floor. We want to say transform dot position equals start position. Else, move that up here. Transform dot position equals end position. And um, that's the code for it. That's all that we need to do for the, the code. Um, so if we go back to here, uh, our cube, which is our elevator. We're going to add our simple elevator menu. I've activated simple activator menu. I don't know. Uh, that's not the right one, is it? No. Simple elevator move is what it's called. And then the destination height. So we put in four here. And that's all we need to do for, for that script. We just want to move it up to the, the fourth level. Then for our button, though, what we want to do is we want to uh, specify the, the, the what happens on the click event. So we can do our plus and then choose the object. So we're going to choose our cube, which is our elevator floor. And then we are going to choose simple elevator move. And we're going to click on, where is it? Move elevator. So I don't, I'm just right, just right uh, there. There you go. I'm looking at the screen there, cheating. Uh, so move elevator just right there. That's the one that you want. Uh, and so now when we click on this, we click on move elevator. It moves up, it moves down. It moves up, it moves down. Okay. Uh, and that's how you get uh, a cube or any other object to move um, from one place to another using just a button. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not very exciting. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it's easy just assigning variables, but what we really should do is we should animate it somehow. So move elevator should actually move the elevator. Um, and so let's do that. This is just snapping into position. If we're at this point and we, cl we click on the elevator, then we should actually be you know, move the elevator. So what I'm going to do is, instead of move elevator, by the way, if that's all you want to do, then this video is over for you. You can go about your business. Thank you very much for watching. Um, but it's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> uh, I wanted to go a little bit deeper than, the, than we are doing just now. So. so we have that. Now what we need to do is... Uh, we want to move from one position to another position. So I want to, uh, instead of move elevator, 
um, I want to see uh, move the uh, move elevator on ground floor. But I don't want to say move elevator on ground floor. I actually want to say start coroutine move elevator on ground floor. Um, and now I can create my uh, generate this method here. So I have my generate method, which I'm going to move down to here. Uh, and so my move method, um, I'm going to create uh, my action. So my action is going to be created inside here. So this is my coroutine factory. Again, the links for this package is, is uh, in the show notes below. Um, uh, description of the video, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to say um, var um, and what I want to do here, I want to say uh, if uh, vector3 uh, start equals on ground floor, uh, if it's on the ground floor, I want it to be the start position. Otherwise, I want it to be the end position. And then the end vector is going to be on ground floor, is going to be the end position. So that's our the position, the position the, the last position that our, vector, our uh, elevator should go to. And then we want start position. So we have our start, we have our end there. And now what we want to do is we want to move that value there. But we don't want, we want to also have a bool is, actually just want to have running. Uh, and that's kind of redundant, we just need running. So if it's running, we don't want to move the elevator. We only want to move the elevator, because you can't move the elevator. When you call an elevator, think about this logically. When you call an elevator, it doesn't suddenly decide, well, the people going up are less important than you, so it just pulls the elevator. It would be nice if that happens, but it doesn't. Uh, so they, they finish their journey, and then when it's finished, then the elevator gets called back down to you. So inside our move elevator, we're going to say, if running, return. Just going to get right out of there. We don't, we're not interested in, in doing anything else. And inside our move elevator, we're going to say running equals true. And then uh, I want to create a coroutine here. So I'm going to say coroutine, uh, coroutine factory. Now it's not going to find this initially, but if I click on the little uh, light bulb here, I can choose using Sloan Kelly dot game lib. And then that brings in our using from up here, Sloan Kelly dot game lib. And then we can do create. Uh, and then it's how long it's going to take. So it takes in a duration. And then the action that it's going to take in. Now the action is a floating point number. Now the floating point number we're going to choose is we're going to choose um, a lerp between these two points. Okay, so I am going to say um, that the action is going to be, uh, incidentally, if you don't know about actions, then up there, uh, there's a card. Uh, you might want to click on that and, and go in and, um, and uh, th that video covers actions. So we have our duration here, we have our actions, so we're going to pass in our, our floating point number. And our floating point number uh, is going to lerp between those two values. So it's going to be transform.position equals vector 3.lerp and then it's the start vector, whatever the start vector is, the end vector, and then whatever the time is. So this should actually be time. Let's change that to time just to make it a little bit clearer what's going on here. And then we have, uh, we have a return here as well. Uh, and that gets rid of that. So the only mistake that we have in this file just now, and you can see there's a red mark just there, uh, the only mistake we have here is this duration doesn't exist. So let's say we want to make the, the duration of the elevator three seconds. So we can do public float duration equals three. 
and so our duration is down to 3. So now our move elevator is going to go from whatever position it is to whatever other position it is, uh, taking 3 seconds, so the journey takes always takes 3 seconds, and every time we go through this update, this tick, this is what happens, is we update the position of the transform uh, by lerping linear interpolate between the start position and the end position uh, at a particular time. And all of that happens sort of behind the scenes inside this uh, create um, coroutine uh, factory in here. So now, uh, instead of just clicking and then snapping into place, what we've got is um, big mistake. Um, right, first of all, we need to, at the very end, um, we need to set running to be uh, false. So our post condition is going to be an action, which is just um, running equals false. So that is our that is our only thing that we need to do there. So we need to make sure that running is equal to false. So it doesn't take any parameters. It's just an empty routine, um, but we want it to, to return false. Uh, and again, if this is confusing, then please go uh, read up on the the uh, the actions uh, video or look at the actions video. Not read up on the actions video. So that's the first mistake we did. The second mistake we did was it flips here. So. It is currently in the ground floor. So what we should do is we should actually not do this here. We should flip this here. This is what we should do. We should actually flip this here. So when this ends, we should then move this down to here. OK, that makes more sense. So now we have two functions that we're doing here. So the first function is this ticks every single time. And then at the end, we want to say running equals false. And if it was on the ground floor, it's no longer on the ground floor. And then that should be it. That should be everything working. I think we're, I think we're good. So we move elevator and it moves up. And you see, we can click all, uh, click there all we want. It doesn't work. Although that's not working there. It's just snapping to the the start there. So what are we doing wrong here? Uh, is there something that's wrong inside create? Let's look inside create. So if post condition is not equal to null, then run the post condition. Okay. Let's see if this runs. So we will attach to Unity. Um, And we'll play. And we'll move the elevator up. And running is getting set to false. And um, on ground floor, on ground floor. Actually, maybe we. You know what, maybe we don't actually need that because we're returning this here. So this is going to return the coroutine. So maybe the problem is um, having this in here in the first place. Maybe we just need to have it here because this is this is the coroutine. So the coroutine is going to keep doing this bit over and over again. And then we set this to be false, unreachable code detected. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think that's just because it's a coroutine and we end up with these kind of uh, things with uh, with Unity. Uh, no, so now that's not working at all. <laughs> um, so, what am I doing wrong here? So if I have running equals false, and I run it, 
uh, it sets it to be false, which means I can click on it again, but it doesn't seem to reverse it. Am I reversing it someplace else? Is that what's in the code? I don't think I am. Okay, so move the elevator. It's not running. Click on move elevator again. Okay, and it does that there. So I then want it, instead of uh, being that, I want it to say on ground floor equals not on ground floor at the end. Okay. Um, so that pulls that out there. And it does that there. Um, this making no sense. So I set my breakpoint here. I thought this video was going to be a lot quicker than half an hour. Well, it is a lot quicker than half an hour, but but not for me. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll move the elevator. And then that ends there. So running. So where's my locals? So running. Uh, is it because? I wonder if it's because it's inside that. It's just creating a local variable. Uh, that's messed up if that's the case. So on ground, so if I do, um, if I drag that in there, uh, it didn't like that at all. And if I drag this in here, it didn't like that either. Running is not in scope. Hmm, that's a tricky one. So I want to create that there. I thought that would have been more than sufficient to do that. Um, I can't have it there. Why is that not working? I don't want to do this because this seems cheap and hacky, but um, I'm wondering if this dot will actually work. So in this case here, name can be simplified, alt enter. Okay, so we do alt enter, uh, remove this, okay. But this one, it likes. Well, that's just weird. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, so if I change it to that, I don't understand why this dot for running, okay, so I move the elevator up, and moves it down. Well, okay, you learn something new every day. <clears throat> Visual Studio help there. That was uh, that's kind of weird. I don't uh, I don't get how. Um, all right, let's think this through. Why is this not working? Okay, so what if? All right, I don't like using this dot. What if I Say so running equals true. So running equals true is there. And then I do var is runs. Is it because I don't use it here?
Alright, I'm confused as to why this is uh, um, not working the way that I thought it should work. So, it's not running to be true here. I have my coroutine. Um, I do an action here. I do another action here. For some reason, if I do this dot, uh, it complains and says that this name can be simplified, but it doesn't do it for this here. But they're both, oh, is it because running is set? If I change it to that, I can't be right. And it isn't. I don't understand. Okay, I really, <laughs> I'm failing to see what I'm, I'm missing here. This seems, uh, is kind of arbitrary. Um, okay, let's not dwell on it. Um, if at first you don't succeed, add this dot, which goes against the, my grain. Um, but it seems that th because this is inside a closure, it doesn't like it uh, somehow. I don't know. I, I don't understand. This is the bit that I don't understand is it likes this one, but it doesn't like this one. So, okay. All right. Okay. Well, I think we're done for, for this part of the, the, the video anyway. Um, it is working. Um, and it is doing the, the right job. So, that's good. Okay. All right, the next part involves, uh, the next part involves getting standard assets. Okay, so <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this interactive now. So if I go to standard assets and I go grab the third person one and choose the third person controller and we just drop him in the scene, uh, then we can uh, let him run around and you can see that he can run over to here and if we wanted what we could do is we could go grab the cube and then we could move him up in the air okay so he's a little bit howdy doody but you know oh no he's fallen lost him um maybe we could figure that out actually i think if we parent him to it then it will work better so we have this uh, little guy here, and I think if we, maybe if we pair him, let's see if we pair him to the ground there. So that's him paired to the ground. So if we pair him to the ground and then we move the ground, maybe he won't go crazy. Yeah, there you go, he doesn't go crazy. When you pair him to the ground, okay, that's good. So let's not pair him to the ground just yet. But you get the idea, he can wander around and then uh, what we could do is we can wander him over onto here and then we press the move elevator button and then he moves up. So that's good, and he moves down. And you know, it's a bit howdy doody or whatever it is. But what we can do is we can pair him to that. But ideally what we want is we want some kind of control box here that he interacts with and then calls the elevator. So that's, that's the kind of, um, um, the sort of thing that we want. So what I want to do is I want to, uh, let's call this elevator. And the elevator, the destination height is gonna be zero. And our actual height is gonna be four. So now, when we go up to the elevator, you'll see that the elevator is now up here. And we click on move elevator, and it doesn't do anything because move elevator is on the ground. It thinks it's on the ground floor. Um, so, what we want to do is. Um, 
Well, it's actually on start floor. So we've got, why is that not working now? <laughs> um, all right, so we've got start floor, um, start position equals transform dot position, end position equals end position plus destination height. Ah, destination height is zero. Um, so that's not what we actually want to do. Destination height is actually going to be minus four. So that's actually my mistake. So the destination height is actually minus four because it's minus four from where we are. It's not actually zero. So uh, this should be uh, on start floor. And we'll rename everything there. Um, and so now it should, after it compiles, uh, it should work. So we click on, we move on over to here. Click on move elevator. It moves all the way down to the floor. We click on there and then we move the elevator and it moves all the way up. And then you can move on to the next uh, next level of the game. We change the camera, all that kind of stuff. So what we actually want to do is we want to have um, some kind of control panel. So let's create a control panel. So uh, our control panel is just going to be a cube. Cube. Um, and cube uh, is going to sit over here. That sounds about right. Is that about the same height as our our little fella there? And we'll make it kind of um, scale it in just a little bit so it looks more panelly. And like so. We don't want it to overlap. Make it a little bit more panel like something like that. That's good enough. Something like that. Okay. So now what he should do is he should wander over to here and then press some kind of interaction button and then that gets him on the elevator and then when he's in the elevator we then move the elevator up. That's the, the idea. Um, so for the this interaction what we're going to do is we're going to have this as a control panel and then we need it we've got a box collider for that but we want to add an empty game object and this is going to be the hit box we're going to call this hit box uh, and this is going to be box collider and the box collider for this is going to be quite big. Uh, it's going to be about this by um, uh, this size. And then the offset is actually in here. Uh, let's make it uh, here-ish. And bring that in just a little bit. To about there. Okay. So uh, when you when we interact with uh, this this box collider, it's going to print up a message that says call elevator, and or call elevator. I'm I'm only using a mouse here, so I think the fire is the mouse button. Um, so it shouldn't it shouldn't fire when we click on, on anything else, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so there's our our collider there. So we need a elevator control panel now. So our scripts are getting bigger. So we need to do create C sharp script and this will be elevator control panel. And reload. And our elevator control panel. Uh, I think what we can do is we can actually have um, this is a collider, so uh, our hitbox is a trigger. Um, so we can do void on trigger enter. Um, and then 
uh, I guess it's private, but uh, on trigger enter collider other, we're going to assume it's the player because uh, it's not interacting with anything else, I don't think. Uh, let's make sure that's not interacting with anything else. Uh, let's move the center just a little bit over there so that it's not touching anything uh, else. I don't think it is touching yet. It's not touching that there, so you could probably move that back just a, uh, just a tad to maybe there. Yeah, right about there. That's good enough. Um, oh, I so. Uh, all right. So if we enter that that trigger there, what we want to do is we want to display um, a message, but we also want to know if they're inside there. So we want to say bool inside uh, hit box. So we want to say inside hit box equals true and then we want a, an exit as well so we want to say void on trigger exit and we get rid of that private and we say inside hitbox equals false and we'll do a print uh, inside hitbox and then print leaving hitbox so that we know just just for testing purposes that we're actually hitting this this uh, box here. So I'm going to bring up the console window, hit on play, and then when we go into here, you'll see that nothing actually happened. And he's got a rigid body against him. I know he's got a rigid body against him. Why is he not? Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> um, is it because it's a child object? Is it because I don't have a script on it? Could that be the reason? Could that be the reason why it didn't work? Let me just add the script quickly. What is the script called? The script is called elevator control panel. Elevator control panel. Maybe, maybe now it'll work, now that we have a script attached. Do you think that'll help? So we're going to console and still nothing. Um, uh, let's let's just add the box collider. Let's not bother having a hit box. Let's just add another box collider here. And um, oh, the problems are working with box colliders. Uh, and then the box collider is going to have a size of uh, that wide and about that deep, that deep. And the offset is going to be in from the Z that way to about there. Okay. So we have this box collider. It should be there. It is a trigger. Um, all right. Let's try and get this to work and walk up there we go he meant he's in he's he's down uh but he did enter the hitbox and he did certainly leave the xbox uh, the the hitbox so we have that there that's that's good uh now we want to do is we want to add a um what do we want to add we want to add ui and then we want a canvas uh, on there, and then we also want a, um, a piece of text on there, and the text is going to say press fire to call elevator. Okay, and um, I'm going to pull this back down again, uh, and it should be quite quite large there. So our canvas is actually going to be inside world space. And canvas scale is that. And then we want a canvas group attached to it because we want to be able to fade that in and out. Actually, really, we just want to show it. Uh, but um, we also want to scale that canvas right down. Um, Um, I'm going to be 
zero, zero, zero. We want it to be right down there so that when we're in the game, uh, our canvas is, what is that? Um, there we go. Uh, so our press fire to call our canvas is going to be uh, appearing here. And then our text is, uh, we're going to bring that in just a little bit there. And we'll make that, is it white? I think it's white. And uh, we're ready to go here. There you go. You'd missed one out there, so one hundred there. And I do want to move that text to somewhere um, that's far too big. Uh, one. easier ways to do this but anyway that's the idea is I want to have that there and so our control panel we need to enter the text there so uh, we're gonna say um, uh, when it's inside the hitbox we want to fade up the control panel so I'm gonna do uh, public canvas uh, info text for lack of a better word, uh, and that's going to be a canvas group, and we're going to say void awake uh, info text equals find comp find get component in children canvas group, and that's our canvas group. And then we want to fade that up. So on trigger enter, we're going to fade up. And then the other one, we're going to fade down. So when we enter the text, we're going to say, um, start coroutine. Coroutine factory dot create so again we're doing our creation here our duration is going to be 0 0.25 seconds and the action um, is going to be time and the time is then going to say um, uh, info text dot alpha equals and then whatever the time is so equals time so we're going to um, yeah, time. Uh, is that going to give us the right thing though? Uh, yeah, because it's going to be the time, so it's going to be at zero to one. Um, and that's all we need to do for that. And we're seeing that one there. And then for the leaving what we want to do is we want to say one minus time so when we enter we're going to do the fade up and when we leave we're going to do the fade down all right so our canvas should default to zero for the alpha so when we walk up to this There you go, it fades up, and then when we move away, it fades out. So, fade up, fade out. All right. 
And then once we click fire, we want to call the elevator. But only if we're inside the, the, the canvas. So for this one, we want to say void uh, update. Uh, and we want to say uh, if input dot get button up fire one, I think it is. Um, and I'm inside the box. Actually, let's do it the other way around. We want to say if inside hit box and the fire is up, I then want to call our move elevator. So we know that the elevator is going to be um, uh, in some position. We just want to call the elevator. So it's going to be move the elevator. So uh, I want to have a public elevator, simple elevator move, uh, move. So that's our elevator. Actually, it's going to be our elevator. So then I'm going to do elevator dot move elevator. Um, and so there we go. We can do that there. Um, but what we could also do is we could also say elevator is coming or so, you know, that kind of, you got to let the user know what's happening. The user, the player know what's happening. So let's run this and I'm going to run this and then I'm going to press fire to call elevator. And I click on fire and it says null reference because what I need to do is I need to drag this over. So I have my control panel and uh, you see that it doesn't have a canvas group. That's fine. Actually, what we can do is uh, I don't need to make that public because I'm actually getting that uh, from here. But I do need this elevator to be um, set. So our control panel needs to know what elevator it's it's actually interacting with. So it's this elevator over here. So this is this is good. It was working. So when I click on that, it will uh, move the elevator. So now move over to here. Press fire to call elevator. Press the fire button, and then it goes in there. And then we'll need to figure out how to move up to the next floor. So. Uh, if the elevator is moving, what we want to do is we want to um, um, turn off the, the text. Oops. Oh, what am I pressing here? Um, so I'm going to copy this here and I'm going to put this in here. Um, and yeah, that's all we want to do. We just want to fade that out um, so that it's been called. Um, and maybe we want to put a gatekeeper in here as well. So elevator called. So let's make sure that this is like a one way, one way thing. So. Uh, if the elevator hasn't been called, and they're actually if they're inside the hip box, and the elevator hasn't been called, and they press the fire button, so they're inside the hip box, they haven't called the elevator. Let's press the fire button, and then we'll say elevator called equals false. We'll move the elevator, and then we'll take maybe a second to do that, to do the fade down, because then like that because it takes three seconds for it to fall and what else uh, so if yeah okay that's fine um, no actually we want to do if elevator called return because we don't want to we, won't, we don't want to interact with it. If it wants to elevate, it's a one-way journey. We're making this a one-way journey. Uh, if the elevator has been called, then we don't want to come back to to be able to like fade in, fade out. We just want to fade it out. 
because that part's been done. So we're moving on to the next level. This is the idea is that this would be like a an elevator that, that we're moving on to the next part and we don't need to interact with it anymore. So we walk up to here and press vertical elevator, press fire. You see that it fades out. Uh, uh, that's not good. Why is that not working? Uh, elevator cold should be set to be true. That's why. And yeah, that's it. All right. And so we run up to here. Press vertical elevator. I mean, we should have a wall here as well to stop that from happening. So you can see that now that the the elevators, it's now it's now dead to us. So we now want to have it so that when you're inside the elevator, the elevator then moves up. That's the easy bit. <laughs> We're on the home stretch. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to add another box collider here, and the box collider for this, uh, I'm going to move up um, one. So it's going to move up to there. Uh, and that's all we need to do for the box collider for, for that. Now, the reason why we want the box collider is that when the, the person interacts with it, they then press the fire button. And again, I'm not going to uh, add the canvas to it, but you get you get the gist um, of where we're going with this, uh, hopefully. So if you want to then do the, the, the canvas that then says to the player, you know, press a key, you can do that. Uh, so I'm going to add a, a script here, which is... Um, elevator um, uh, send. I don't know what to call this. Elevator rise. Let's call it elevator rise for lack of a better phrase. Uh, so my elevator rise script, I reload that, uh, is also going to have. Uh, it's kind of similar to our elevator move, uh, or no, not our elevator move, our elevator control panel script, uh, in that we want to, um, yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> apologies for the edits in this. Um, I've got people coming in and out and stuff, so um, hopefully it's not disjointed a video. Uh, all right, so we have our elevator called. So we want to borrow some aspects of this here. Um, for our elevator rise scripts, we're going to do um, void on trigger enter, and then we want our void on trigger exit. Actually, we don't want a trigger exit, we just want a trigger enter. And we're going to have a bool inside hitbox. And we're going to have a void update. So we're going to have our update here. And uh, if you're inside there, we're going to say inside hitbox equals true. Actually, maybe we do want that private void on trigger exit inside hitbox equals false. Because we don't want them to we don't want them to fall out of the elevator, press the button, and then they've had it. Um, so if inside, oh, and we also want an elevator moving. Elevator moving. Um, and then we want a simple elevator move. Elevator. So uh, if, the ele if they're inside the hitbox, so this is where it's a bit similar. So if they're inside the hitbox and the elevator is not moving, and so it's not moving, and we pressed fire, get button up, fire one, uh, elevator moving equals true, and then we want to say elevator dot move elevator. Uh, and that's all the script is there. That's everything we need to do for our elevator rise. Uh, so now we go back to our elevator. 
which has got two box colliders on it. So we have our edit, we have our uh, box collider here, which is just the sort of trigger point, and we need to mark that as being a trigger as well. And then we want to add our elevator rise, and it needs a simple elevator move, which we actually have, so we don't need to have this as public. Um, so what we can do is we can do get component, component, simple elevator move, move elevator. That's all we need to do. We don't need to have anything external. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's the only thing we need to have in our script is our on trigger enter, on trigger exit, just to make sure we're inside that box. And if we are inside that box and the elevator is not moving, uh, then the user presses the fire button that moves the elevator up. And so I'll let that compile. And now our little guy should press fire. And then we go inside the elevator and then we press fire again. And the elevator takes them up to the next level. We change the camera, fade to black, whatever you want to do. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. Uh, and that's it, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, making an elevator to three parts. Uh, the easy part, which is the move elevator part down here with just the button. And then we've got a little bit more complicated one where we, we actually uh, animated the movement and then finally um, moving, uh, letting the character interact with something to move it. So hopefully uh, you found that uh, interesting. Hi guys, and thank you very much to Jesus uh, for suggesting this video. Hope you enjoyed the, the sort of uh, the, the sort of extra bits as well. So the above and beyond the actual question that, that uh, Jesus posted. Um, and yeah, thank you again for watching the videos. It's very much appreciated. Uh, um, I like the the interactions that we're getting now in the, the comment section. So if you want to leave a, a comment, they're right, right below you. Uh, if you want to say, you know, you like the video then thumbs up if you didn't like the video thumbs down if, especially if you didn't like the video then let me know what, what was wrong with it um you know i'm too rambly in the middle probably uh i can see the comments already <laughs> sorry um um yeah it's especially the coroutine part anyway uh <laughs> uh but hopefully i didn't spoil your enjoyment too much uh if you liked the video and you haven't subscribed then then please hit the subscribe button which is just down there down there you also need to hit a bell icon and get a note from your mum and send it into facebook along with a, a cheek swab and all that kind of stuff um you don't have to do that you just need to hit the bell button apparently um and uh yeah thanks again and i will um see you in the next video hopefully if you still like these videos um